Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another recommendations video. So this one was a video topic slash recommendations that were recommended by you guys. So something that I do once or twice a month is I put up a question on my, um, what's it called? My YouTube community page. So definitely make sure that you're following me so that you can help be a part of these decisions. And I will put out you know, give me book recommendations. And then sometimes if you're a channel member, I let people vote on a topic and other times I just use them as inspiration for videos that I want to do because girls got to keep coming up with topics. I've been putting out three to four videos a week for three years now, which is crazy. <laughs> I just had my anniversary. I just had it come up on my Facebook page that three years ago I shared my very first video that I ever did. Wow, like that is, that's crazy. Anyway, but the topic for this one, as you can see, is books that I wish more people would read. So some of these you might agree with, some of them you might not. Some of them are new to me, some of them are ones that I've been around for a long time, but they're all books that I feel like I haven't had a lot of conversations with people about, either because, again, because they're new or because they were unheard of before, or they're books that maybe some people just don't like that much. So I'm going to go ahead and run through the ones that I have. And then you should tell me some down below. It'll be great. The first one I want to talk about is The Rivalry by Nikki Sloan. This is one of her books that came out in 2017. I recently just put up a video that was a deep dive on Nikki Sloan where I talk about all the books that she's written. Thankfully for Nikki Sloan, it's not too difficult because she only has about um, like not even quite 20 books. So it's not as intensive as some other authors that I'm trying to do deep dives for. Um, but yeah, but this one is kind of outside of her like normal realm. I mean, she doesn't only write dark romance. That's the thing too, is that she doesn't solely write dark romance. And this one's kind of a rom-com. This is a college romance. Look at that booty pop. Like seriously, Jay can get it. All right. So the rivalry is about a cheerleader from one college town and the, I don't know what role that he is. If he's a line backer or a whatever he is, I don't know that stuff, but they meet at a wedding. They almost have a one night stand. She's friends of the bride. He's friends of the groom. She and him had a freaking crazy connection. And so his friend, who's now married to her friend, gives her information of a bar that he's going to be at that night. And it turns out that it's a sports bar and it is her rival's sports bar. And so she's like, we can't be together. And he's like, but we have such a great connection. That's stupid. And she's like, you don't understand. No one is going to understand if we're together. And he's like, I think you're being a little crazy. So they try to make this relationship work. I absolutely love Jay. I think he's delightful. I think this is one of her least talked about books. I feel like when I had read it, I hadn't heard anyone else talk about this one. I really liked it. I thought it was a really interesting conundrum. I have heard from some of my subscribers who read this book who said, I am from the one town. We definitely felt that same way about the other college town. Because <laughs> I think this is a like Ohio, Michigan rivalry or something. And so Nikki even says in the beginning, she says this, she's like, while this book is based on two very real universities with a rivalry, please know that a few traditions, all coaching staff and some historical game outcomes were fictionalized. Creative license was taken, but it's still like, based on a rivalry. So I love this one. I wish more people would read it. And I hope that me talking about it helps you give it a try because this is definitely a lighter one by Nikki Sloan. If you don't want to dive into some of her like threesome stuff or her mafia stuff, like you could definitely start here. It definitely fits along the lines of like an L. Kennedy or Serena Bowen situation for sure. Then um, we'll stick with sports. We'll go with A Secret for a Secret by Helena Hunting. I know Lots of people have read Helena Hunting, so this isn't brand new, but I specifically want to talk with people about King and Queenie because I love these two so much. I read this book before I was giving things six stars, but I absolutely give this six stars. Um, this is about the daughter of a coach, or I mean the manager. He's a manager. He's a team manager. And they, like, have a one-night stand. He never does one-night stands. Um, he was in a long-term relationship um, for a very long time and that recently ended, but his parents still want him to be with that girl and she still wants to be with him, even though it was just kind of like easy. They weren't like head over heels for each other really, which is kind of sad, but happens. And yeah, she has, 
a bit of a wilder past and the the father of her the like team manager or whatever asked king to kind of look out for her and it's like but don't date my daughter here's the thing though king is a really great guy and her dad definitely if of anyone on the team king is the one for her i don't want to say anything else because this one is so good um i also love this book because the communication is really good. When we have the darkest moment of this book, the way that the hero responds to it just gave me all the feels. And that's why King is like on my book boyfriends list. And it's why this works so good. She's actually coming out with a fourth book in the story that I believe um, is about Queenie's dad and another character. I can't remember who that one is, but it's so it's going to be a like they're in their 40s, and I'm pretty excited for an older love story. Um, it could be really exciting. So that's a surprise, because she'd already moved on to, like, another series, and she came back to write, I think it's called uh, A Love for a Love. I don't remember what it's called, but I'm really excited. But you should read this series, specifically this book. This is my favorite book. Then... I have a couple like shorter ones for you. There is Craving Flight, wow, by Tamsin Parker. Um, this is a very interesting book. It got, I actually heard it recommended on a Faded Mates episode and I had read some other books by Tamsin Parker. I didn't know this one existed. This one is an older love. It is about Zipporah Berger, Berger, who is 37 and single and she has recently like went Orthodox Jew. She was originally just kind of a like, I can't remember if it's like reformed Jew, but she wasn't living the life and so she's went into it and she, her first marriage broke up because of the kink that she was into um, and she thinks that she will never find that. Again, especially since she's in a very religious, you know, community now. But she ends up asking to be set up by the matchmakers. And she gets set up with Elin. And he actually is into BDSM too. So she's entering this new marriage. Now, it's still, he's definitely a stern brunch daddy for sure. And he's been Jewish all his life. Well, okay. He has been Orthodox Jew all of his life. And so... It's very, certain aspects of Zipporah are very, like, frustrating for him because she doesn't follow all the rules correctly and there's a lot of teaching that needs to be done. This book broke me into a thousand pieces and it's only, like, novella length and I bawled my eyes out so much. The kink in this was beautiful. How they work their way through their communication is beautiful. The understanding of what would make this woman choose to go into such a strict life with so many rules and like traditions oh it was good it was so 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 good but I understand if this couldn't work look my nails match this sorry if this doesn't work for some people but I just wish more people were talking about this be who love kink because oh my god it also had some kinds of kink that I hadn't seen done before but I just hadn't read them done before and I really liked that it was cool then there is Love and War by Shira Lynn. This is an author's debut novel. This is a, it even says up here, it's a BWWM modern historical romance. So it's a husky man, husky woman. It's an interracial romance. It takes place in Paris during World War II. Whew, I know guys, this is, this is heavy, but this is not a Nazi romance. I promise it's not. This is a doctor who is forced to, into working for the Third Reich by his father. He's kind of tricked, kind of forced. And he rescues this woman named Victoire. And she becomes a maid at his home. Um, and he never, like, means for her to be a maid. He literally just protects her in a situation. He acts first and thinks about it later. And as, like, she's like, well, I'm not just going to live here and not do anything. So she becomes his maid. And this is a slow burn um, this has two different time periods, so it takes place in, I think it's the 90s, 1980. It takes place in 1980 in California, and we get the point of view of this woman named Lily, who you very soon will find out how Lily plays into this, but this is Emil and Victoire, and if you love historical romance, if you love interracial romance, <sighs> but there are some trigger warnings in here, um, definitely look them up, but just look at this cover. Just look at this book. Guys, hmm. 
It's so good. This book had me weeping. I was afraid to read this book, okay? Like, I was very intimidated to read it, but I'm so glad that I did it. I can't wait to see what Shira writes next. I was actually reached out to to review this book, and I was, like I said, I was scared because there's a lot of topics that even for the taboo queen, I was like, I don't want to mess this up. But this author did a lot of research. She's a very smart woman. There's an interview with her on Charles uh, Books on Stereo's channel, and I highly recommend you read it, but I want more people to read this book who love historical romance. Like, I recommend this if you love Lovely War, um, which is a YA World War II romance. Like, this is that to, like, another level. And it's so sexy, but it's such a slow burn. And it's so powerful. Like, I just love them so much. It is so pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> Then I have Hurt by Lydia Michaels. I have never heard another one talk, another person talk about this book. So I talk about Lydia Michaels sometimes when I talk about Breaking Perfect, which is a menage, um, mental health. Um, there's a lot going on in this one. This book, whew, this book, guys. This book is about Callan McGregor and Emery Tanner. And so but it's this one's also told in two time periods and it's told when Emil is in I think he's from Scotland or Wales I can't I can't remember but or he's Scottish yes and currently he works at a hotel bar and Emery works the front desk and they've had this flirtation going back and forth for a while and we also get these flashbacks to how many years ago let me check to, I don't know. It's a few years. I don't know if it's like five, six or whatever years later where he's working at the hotel bar. But in the past he was in Scotland and he was stuck under kind of this like mafia kingpin's grip. And he's trying to free him and his sister from this guy's grip. And then we flash ahead to him and the, to him in the present time and he has this flirtation going with Emery and Emery thinks he's really hot and he thinks she's really pretty but he doesn't make a move on and then um in a horrible twist of fate before they've ever done anything together and I don't just mean sexually before they've ever even went on a date one night Emery gets brutally raped by someone at the hotel um, I'm telling you this not only for trigger warnings reasons, but also kind of sets up what kind of triggers the memories for Callum, like what he's been through, as well as him now trying to help her through this because he ends up being the one to find her and now he's the only one who can like comfort her through all this. And she feels like they've missed their chance because they were building towards this beautiful relationship and now this travesty has just happened. And so, this is a very intense book. It says a dark romantic thriller. This is a, this does have an HEA, but there is graphic depiction of female and male rape in this book. Um, yeah, look up full trigger warning for this one, but I've never heard anyone else talk about it. I mean, I've never heard anyone else talk about Breaking Perfect either. I found that on a list when I was looking for menages, but this book, wow, like this book is so powerful and just blew my mind. Like it blew my mind. It was, wow. Like I want to do a reread, but also I'm like scared because it's, <laughs> it was intense, but I mean, you guys are always looking for those. So this is one. Then, real quick, I want to talk about um, one other kind of contemporary one. Um, I mentioned this recently in, like, a previous video, too. But since it's one I've never heard anyone talk about, now's the time. Um, J.A. Huss has this series that is a, uh anti-hero series. It is about super-powered people who are, like, vigilantes, and they have superpowers. Some of them literally have technology in their bodies. Think about if you've read... Like, if you've read Marissa Meyer's superhero series, this is that on, like, an adult scale, but also there's not as many super beings. Like, there's there's a small group of them. 
not whereas in like her world like lots of people are born that way um and it's this small group of of men who are trying to make change and it's really sexy a little bit kinky um there are a few trigger warnings in this one but there is like an ex think like there's kind of like an Xavier school for special people but that school is what like makes the people special like kids get sent there because their parents owe money or they've gotten in trouble and so their kids get taken from them and put in this school and then their kids get experimented on and turned in to things and so this takes place how many years later and it's some of the products of that experimentation are these men and they are trying to kind of fight back so there's someone who kind of feels like a batman there's someone who kind of feels like a tony stark he's like a tech genius who's like experimented on different things there is an ai who's super sassy and is obsessed with her men giving her some grandchildren like literally it's an ai who like wants to be a grandma <laughs> it's really good so i've read the first two books in this series anarchy found and anarchy missing like these covers are they're so sexy. Like mm. the first, they're all three on KU. The first one is on Audible Plus, and the other two are both available for like seven fifty dollar upgrades if you want to. Um, I really enjoyed them. All right, now we have some historicals here. So one I want to talk about is My American Heiress by Louisa James. So this one is a standalone, but it kind of sort of like. You see people from her Desperate Duchess universe, but this is actually a standalone. This was one of, like, the last books of hers that I saved. I have since, well, I still have her oldest books to read, but this was one that I was saving. Um, this is about a girl named Mary, and she has had two jilted fiancés. So the next man she gets engaged to, she is certain she's going to marry him. However, the night that her betrothal is announced, she meets this guy out on a balcony whose name is the Duke of Trent. And she doesn't know and he doesn't know that she's about to be engaged to his brother. And they just have this like really great like banter and then she's engaged to his brother. And his brother seems fine. Like his, his brother seems like a great guy. Two things. One, his brother hates his older brother. So he's always saying mean things about Trent and is like thinks that he stole his inheritance. Like, there's just a whole bunch of things. And number two, he's kind of a controlling jerk. So Mary, she's kind of a free spirit. She's American. She, her family is super wealthy, you know, so they sent her here to get a husband and give them respectability because that's what they would do. And he is just kind of controlling in some slight ways. What's the cool juxtaposition of this is that Trent thought he wanted this super proper wife, like he's a duke, that's what he's going to need. And he meets this fiery American and he's like, if she's married to my brother, he is going to crush her heart. So he goes about trying to win her. And this is a big book. Like, I love it. I love when they're big books. So he goes about trying to win her, but also knowing that like she doesn't want to have jilted another person. Like it would just be too much. Like once is bad, twice is horrible, but three times would be too much. So she's determined to make this relationship with his brother works, even though he knows it's not the one for her. So this is great. This is one I really don't hear anyone talk about this one. Um, there are dogs in this one. There are adventures in this one. And I mean, this definitely had a trope that I don't super love. And that's a hero who thinks that he can't love someone. But the way that it was resolved in this one made this a five star for me because Eloisa pulled it off for me. I loved it. Then I have Unclaimed by Courtney Milan. I am seeing that a couple other booktubers are like trying this one and I'm very excited. This is actually the second book in the Turner series. I'm going to be reading the first one really soon. Like I have it on my TBR. We're getting to it. Um, but this one is about, this is a virgin hero whose name is um, Mark Turner, Sir Mark Turner. And he wrote a book about chastity and he is like people see him as self-righteous and they see him and so there's some people who love him and really like dive into like chastity is what's important and then there's some people who mock him and think he can't possibly be as perfect as he says he is the thing is mark never said he was perfect and in fact the point of the book well i don't want to tell you what the point of the book that he wrote is because I freaking loved it. But then we have Jessica, who she is a courtesan. 
Um, and she has recently had some really tough times happen and she wants to get out of the courtesan game. She wants to retire. Um, and a former lover of hers offers her a proposition. He will pay all of her debts and give her a settlement if she can corrupt Sir Mark Turner and prove it. And the way that she's supposed to prove it is to get this certain item from him. Um, it might be his ring. <laughs> I can't remember what it is. Um, and to win him. The thing is, she moves to the village where he lives and he immediately knows what she's about. But they start up, so it's like enemy solvers, but they start up this friendship where they decide that, like he says, he's like, I'm the only man who could be your friend because we're never going to be together. Um, but they definitely run into some tight situations. Like Mark is sick of people trying to do this to him. So he's pretty harsh to her right off the bat. He's like, why are you trying to sell yourself like this? Like, what are you doing? You're trying to corrupt me. Like, do you realize how hurtful that is? And it's just very interesting. And this was my first Courtney Milan. And I'm definitely going to read more. I've seen a lot of my friends love other books by her. But I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this one. And I'm excited to read Untamed, I think, is the first one. But I just love their relationship. I love how Mark loved her. And I bawled my eyes out while I read this. Because it's one of those where it's not that he's... It's not that he's mansplaining how she should be treated to her, which is how it could come across. It's him saying that, like, I'm not going to use you that way. And other men might, that might be fine. And it's not my place to tell you that you should expect more. But he says, like, I'm going to respect you more. That's my choice. And my choice to respect you, you can think that that's dumb but I'm going to do it. And I don't know, there was just a way that she wrote it that Mark wasn't a joke. And I love that because I do believe a lot of what he was saying. I really, really do. I think you can, li you can live however you want. But a lot of what he's saying, you know, is you as the reader start out with the same perspective that everyone else has. But the more time you spend with Mark and you see how tired he is of people using his name to do stupid things... Um, cause people are using his name that like chastity is best to say that like all women are trying to tempt you and that women are dirty and he gets so mad at that. And I don't want to tell you like why, but it was so beautiful. It was beautiful. Yep. And then the last book, I talked about this book a lot when I first was transitioning to romance tube. I don't know. It was a while ago. So I haven't read this book in a long time. I will fully admit that. But the feelings that it gave me have not went away. And so I really want to do a reread of this. I found the audiobook of it recently and I really want to reread it. But that's The Air by Grace Burroughs. So this is the first book in The Wyndham's The Duke's Obsession and it's The Air. And this book has a really interesting start. It starts with Gail. Yep, his name is Gail Wyndham. And his mistress is trying to make him slip up. So she's trying to make him get her pregnant because his father, <laughs> his father told his mistress that if she gets pregnant, like on purpose, that he'll make sure his son marries her and that the child will be the next heir because his dad, his dad is getting a little nervous that his son hasn't given him an heir yet. And he's so mad. <laughs> his dad is very loving, by the way. Like, I know I just made him sound bad, but this is one where like the dad is great. But he's getting a little obnoxious. And then, so that happens to this guy this day. And then we have Anna Seton, who becomes his, like, housekeeper. And she brings with her this maid. And this maid is a mute. And she happens to get, she's cleaning the room one day when, like, um, Gail comes by. And she's gotten stuck on the grate. Like, she was leaning over to clean something and the button, sorry, you can't see me, the button of her, like, thing gets stuck on it. So he comes up behind her and she can't speak. And I think she can, I think she is mute. I don't think she's deaf. I can't, I can't remember because, again, it's been a long time. But anyway, he's, like, behind her trying to loosen her. <laughs> I love it. And Anna comes in and sees him behind her uh, jerking a little bit. <laughs> thinks that he's assaulting her. So she picks up a fire poker and bonks him over the head and knocks the duke out cold. 
or he's an earl at this time sorry his dad's a duke I you probably caught that I messed it up and when he wakes up he's like lady I was trying to help her and you just almost killed me so as a punishment he makes her sit with him and fix his head and they start up an unlikely friendship and the reason why I love this book and why I loved it back then and why I need to reread it is that 100%, 100% Grace Barrows knows what love languages are because Gail has physical touch as a love language. Now, I've seen that written about in other places and this was at the time like I had read um, soon after this um, To Love Her or Lose Her had come out and that one also talked about like I but this one, it was clear to me that love language was a thing without it being said because that wouldn't be historically accurate. Because there were so many times in this book where these two, there's a crazy dynamic like Anna, she doesn't want to be his, like she's willing to do a lot of things, but she, she doesn't want anyone to know who she is. There's a whole secret happening with Anna. And that was a little frustrating. Like if you don't, if physical touch isn't as important thing to you, you might be annoyed by Anna sometimes. It's fine. But Gail will not give up on her. And, oh, I was talking about the physical touch part of it. There are multiple times in this book where he just wants to sit by her. And whenever he's by her, he just wants to hold her hand. There were so many situations where sex is not happening. And he just needs to touch her. He just wants to pet her hand. He wants to touch her face. And it says in the text that he felt comfort to touch her. And it's not even with the heroine. When he sees his brother and he knows that like we are lords, like we're not supposed to do that, he feels comfort when he's able to just touch his brother or his dad. And I was like, this book has physical touch in it and I love it so much. And um, back when I used to talk about this all of the time, I had a lot less subscribers, but some of my subscribers read it and we geeked out over it. So if you love physical touch, like maybe it's your love language and you also love historical romances. I would love for you to read this and talk with me because I think I need to reread this book. I'm going to reread this. It's a big one. This one, this one is 440 pages. Like it's a big one. I also have read The Soldier. I didn't like The Soldier quite as much, but I need to read The Virtuoso. Like I have had that on my TBR for so long and I still haven't read it and I need to get to it, but I highly recommend this book. So there you go. There are some books that I feel like I don't hear enough people talk about or they're older books that it's been a while. Um, let me know what are some books that you never hear mentioned on BookTube or you never hear see them on Bookstagram. I mean, there's a lot. We know there's a lot. But tell me what your favorites are. I would love to check that out. Maybe some of them are mine as well. And we'll just have a good old time. So thank you so much for watching this video. I put up new videos three to four times a week. And you can check some of those out right now. Bye.